If you want to be really good at performance and you don't care about your health, don't be an idiot. Take steroids. <laughs> they work. Why do they work? Because it's a hormone that does what? Causes you to epigenetically express what? More protein. Changes all kinds of stuff. If you honestly, so if you don't care about your, if you care about performance more than you care about your health, then don't mess around. Don't be stupid. Get the good stuff. Right? Because you're going to perform better on steroids than not on steroids. Is that true? It's absolutely true. So don't be stupid. Just get them. They're available. You know what I mean? Pretty sure from a few guys across it. But anyway, anyone who beats me has got to be on steroids. I say if you got if you got abs, you're on steroids. That's my that's my boss. <laughs> um, so here's the here's the deal. Is that there's no it, it's what's what I find what I found really strange is that you know look at a guy like Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps won what you know 52 gold medals or whatever it was last time, and Michael Phelps eats at McDonald's and apparently smokes a bong pipe. <laughs> so do you, does anybody in this room honestly believe? That, that, that if you want to be like Michael Phelps and be successful, you should smoke a bong pipe and eat McDonald's? <coughs> or is it possible that Michael Phelps is successful despite the fact that he smokes a bong pipe and eats a McDonald's? And is it possible that that's going to catch up with him over time? That's the biggest thing I want, to, I want you to understand right now, is that really what this is about is bioaccumulation. You are literally, your health and your happiness, your state of well-being, your state of performance, is the physiological, it's the genetic expression of your environment or the stimulus that you feed to your genes. That's your life. Your life is the genetic expression of the environments that, you, that you've been exposed to. Your life is the genetic expression of the stimuli that have reached your genes and caused them to express proteins. Do you understand? Now, I don't care what your stimulation is. You're, you can walk around on all fours and eat flies. You're never going to be a frog. There's a limit to how, in other words, you're only going to express the human genome, and there are limits to the human genome. So understand this, that, that literally what you are, everything that you're going to accomplish in your life is based on how you've stimulated your genes based on the environment that you choose. So the key is to ask this question, how do I stimulate my genes in a way that gives me what I want? Because some of you don't care about your health. I don't care, that's fine. So I have to then, my job is to teach you that the healthy cell performs better in competition than a sick one. Now you might be able to have a pretty sick cell perform pretty well when you're young. It's possible, yes? But over time you're going to bioaccumulate. And that's the biggest key. The biggest thing that you can under, that, that I want you to understand is that you're really about as you as you go through life, it's really about what you bioaccumulate. So if you bioaccumulate the effects of positive stimulation of your genes, you are going to have an amazing life throughout your whole life. If you bioaccumulate a bunch of toxic and deficient sort of lifestyle you know, stimuli, then what happens is, is your body's going to start to break down. And it's really based on stress. You have two choices in your life. You are either eating, moving, and thinking in ways that are going to push you towards your potential, or you're eating, moving, and thinking in ways that are going to push you towards illness and away from your potential. There are no neutral choices in your life. There are no consequence-free choices. There are no consequence-free meals. There are no consequence-free relationships. There are no consequence-free thoughts. There are no consequence-free, you know, patterns of movement. Every single thing you do has a consequence. Now, one-offs don't have giant consequences, do they? But the things that we repeat, you know, the great expression in neurology is that neurons that fire together, wire together. It's called neuroplasticity. The more things, the more times that you repeat something, the more your body will adapt as that's its environment. If I put you at high altitude, your body will literally produce more red blood cells to extract more oxygen from the air that has less oxygen in it. If I move you back down to altitude, your body will then produce less red blood cells. You get it? So whatever your, your chronic environment is, will be reflected in your chronic state of physiology. Get me? So that's one, of the, that's one of the big lessons. What I try to teach people is this. If you want to perform well, you have to exactly, exactly provide your body with the amount of stimulus that is acutely stressful that you can chronically recover from. In other words, you can't get better without stress but you'll never get better unless you have a, a low enough amount of stim stress stimulus that you can recover from. And that's based on your gene code. It's based on, it's based on the fact that you're a human. 
In other words, you, you can overtrain. Everybody get that? And you can undertrain. We all get that. Right? You can overtrain. Under, I err on the side of undertrain, just for safety. <laughs> So one of the things I like to teach people is that let's just understand a little bit about what's going to determine our quality of life and our quality of performance. Because here's what I can tell you. If you're stressed out when, you, when, you're, when you're training or when you perform, you're going to get sick, you're going to break down, you're not going to recover the same way, and you're just not going to express that potential for increased performance. But it's the same of your health. There's nothing that's going to increase your performance. Oh, I shouldn't say that. There's nothing that's going to increase your health that wouldn't also increase your performance. And if you want to perform well for the long term, the truth is you have to be able to train hard, hard for years. Let me just say that again. If you want to really perform well, you have to be able to get your how many hours? You have to get your 50,000 hours in. Now here's what I'm going to tell you. If you get 50,000 hours in but you're sick all the time because you got cold, you eat like crap, you're eating Big Macs, you're everything else, you are going to end up sick. Unless you started very young in a sport where you can override that for a while. But the reality is the thing that really is going to make the difference for most people at that elite level is how many hours of training you can put in and how you recover from that training. Training doesn't make you better. Recovery makes you better. It's the stimulus that makes the difference. Do you know, but the stimulus is a breakdown stimulus. It's after that. So here's what happens. The stimulus, the stimulus to your genes is key, but it's the what the genes have in terms of, so now you stimulate that blueprint, right? And say, let's go, you exercise, and you're doing CrossFit or paddling, or whatever the hell you want to do. And you stimulate your genes. Now that gene has been stimulated. What does that stimulate your gene mean? It means that in that, in that two Empire State Buildings, if you stimulate chin-ups, it's going to go to the chin-up part, right, that makes you better chin-up. Because not only do you stimulate more muscle protein, you know, you're going to release a special, uh, not only are you going to transcribe more protein and get a bigger muscle, but all the neurological pathways to recruit that muscle. You're going to transcribe a protein called CFOS. It's going to allow you to make better neurological connections along the pathways that you need to recruit that muscle. I mean, there's a whole array, a cascade of things that happen. But understand this. Just because you stimulated that, that proper recipe, just because you photocopied that recipe to be better at whatever you want to be better at, doesn't mean you're going to get as, as much improvement as you could unless what? Unless you supply the raw materials. See, there's two phases to this always. It's you have to make the proper stimulus of your gene, and then you have to provide your genes with the right, or the blueprint or the recipe book with the right raw materials. If you stimulate the gene to make a souffle and you don't provide any eggs, it's not going to work out. If you, supply, if you stimulate the gene for better per athletic performance, but you don't provide the nutrients and the antioxidants and the phytochemicals and the rest and the positive attitude and, and the community to work with and, and the feeling good about yourself when you push yourself hard, if you don't supply all those things, here's what we know for sure. You're going to get less result from the same stimulus. Having said that, here's where the biggest marketing scam. Most people try to tell you that if you feed the raw materials, <laughs> it's going to make you better. You know, like they have, I mean, it used to be, I think it was Metagenics. I can't remember these things, right? So they had all these guys who stick their belly out for the before picture. They used to recruit me for the before picture a lot. And then they, so they recruit the before picture, and then what do they do? They go on this 